organics that's the secret. It's the shade grown that's really the secret. It's really the, it, it appeared though, the method of growing was what was creating the wonderful, vibrant flavors that I was searching for in order to have a good cup of coffee. Any product that you have, any agricultural product, you're going to find that the environmental conditions are essential. It was very, it was very difficult to understand it. Like he speaks Spanish, I speak English. It's, it's very hard. There's, there's a lot of cultural boundaries, and there's a lot of there's language barriers. So it was very difficult for us to talk in a conversation tone, but we got through it. We. We had a little chit chat. It was fun. We used a lot of uh, hand signals and stuff. We were, as what he calls it, a cansado, like a relaxing period. When we went to the operation, we saw a huge machine that pretty much takes the beans out of the coffee plant. They have, um, they take the so called cherries and they take the beans out of it, it brings them into the machine, and there's water. So where there's like a hose coming out, hitting it. So wherever there's good ones, they'll go down to the bottom and they'll go through. The bad ones will stay at the top and then you have to, you have to pick them up, man, physically pick them up and push them into like a great, it's a trash. The, the beans that go under are the good beans. So they're gonna go through a machine that pretty much, that takes the beans out of it, squeezes it. And the beans all, they shoot out and they get sent through a different conveyor into down to um, down below where there's um, a guy holding a bag and all the beans pretty much flow right into the bag and they carry the bag. It's very wet, by the way. The bag's very wet because there's all this juice on it and taken into a truck and then driven to get processed. We learned a lot about coffee in that interview, a lot about their history, a lot about what they do there and how they want to grow in the future and how what sustainability pretty much means to them. I I I grow here. Right. My father right esto fue de de mi papá. Mhm. I I I love this. Oh, sí. Sometimes no money, <laughs> but I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. No yeah. quiero vender. No, mm -hmm. no quiero vender. <laughs> no, quiero, quiero trabajar. Qui qui quiero que mi hijo, mi hijo, mm -hmm. my son, yeah. work in oh, this place. The proof is in the taste. Customers are, uh, such as Wine University, are knocking the doors down to have the product. It tastes great. Uh, and it's doing great things for uh, the environment and the farmer. The farmer's uh, family is sustained. We're paying a farmer uh, numbers uh, much better than even fair trade price because of the, the quality and the, the, the compelling uh, nature of this product. The interesting thing about Las Lajas coffee, and I, you know, I saw this when I was in Costa Rica when we uh, went to uh, a facility where they they, they graded and they rated uh, the coffee based upon not only how it looked but how it tasted. Is that really the uh, the overall ratings were just exceptional? In fact, I was you know, it was kind of interesting to kind of experience that or see that up close and personal because you know I didn't know what those numbers meant initially. And I said you know what's the scale and stuff and, and actually the coffee when it was being rated it, it rated right near the top. And I could see the owners getting very, very uh, excited. Yes. And they came back to me and it's just, I said, oh, it's this number and it's, it's right at the top.